Hello. It feels great to say that it wasn't very long since my last video and it's great to see you back here again. In my last video I was building up the Intro 32 chassis for the Clubman Nationals, the BSCRA Mid-America 2024 Clubman Nationals. So let's crack on with the build. So the next job, now that the chassis is nice and flat and straight, we're going to stick in the uh, 332 axle bushes. You're not allowed bearings in this chassis, it must be axle bushes, but they are a free choice and you can solder them into the chassis or you can glue them into the chassis, it doesn't matter. Extra. But I'm going to solder them in just to make sure they're nice and securely fixed for whoever's going to be racing it. I'm going to be using, I think these are Massetti axle bushes, and you can see they've already got a little groove around the inside of them, machined so that it can perhaps trap some oil inside so they don't wear out quite so quickly. There we go, you can see it good in that picture there. See the little groove around the inside? Also, they are quite narrow. Now these Intro 32 chassis um, you have to be quite careful on width of the chassis because if you use bushes that are too wide you sometimes have to grind a bit off or machine a little bit off the outside of the bush to keep your car within width. But these are very narrow so it does give a scope uh, to get the car well within width. So when soldering in these rear axle bushes we have to consider a number of things. There is a standard motor for this class and that is a Hawk 7 but you can use a 7BB, which is the double bull race version. So that's what I'm gonna put into this car because I want it to be uh, as smooth and reliable as I can for whoever wins it in the raffle. The other thing to consider is we have a fixed gearing as well. It has to be a 64 pitch gear, 11 tooth pinion, and a 37 tooth, 16 degree angled spur gear. Now, I think this is a Cohosa one but I've got one here, that's an S and K one, that's a slightly used S and K one. They're both pretty much the same size. Now let's just double check what they are. So this comes out at about 610, 611 in old measurements. The S and K one comes out, now this is fractionally used, so again, maybe the tips have slightly worn off, but that comes out at 608, that one there. Here's a fractionally used uh, Cohosa, but I might have turned that down, turned the tips off. Yes, I have a little bit. So that one's a bit smaller. But I'm gonna set this up for a brand new Cohosa 37 tooth, 16 degree, 332 angled gear. The rules also state that the gear cannot protrude below the chassis. So we've already measured this at 611. Now I've got these little nifty axle blocks here you can see I've got different sizes. So these are like half the axle size. So 300 would give you 600, obviously. 310 would give you 620, 304, 295, etc., etc. So I'm actually not going to use a 310 because that would take me to an axle height that I believe is too high. I don't run like running tires that are too big and lifting up the center of gravity that high. So I'm going to use a 304. So that's going to give me a 608 axle height to the center. Now, this was 611, so I might have to just fractionally skim the very tips of the teeth off the gear every time I put a new gear on, just so it doesn't protrude below the chassis. But I think that's an ideal scenario rather than going even higher with the axle. I must get more of these axle blocks made, and at some point I definitely will. These have a 332 hole in them, um, but again, there's so I make them also with a 2 mil as well. Um, if that's what you're interested in. But I've got to get around to making quite a few more of these. But they're not that cheap. They're made pretty accurately, and I like the fact, well, they're made very accurately, and I also like the fact that they're brass and they're heavy, because some of the ones I've seen are very light, and it's really hard to keep the axle in place unless you're using some other sort of clamping jig to keep everything in place whilst you're soldering. But because these are quite heavy with a very large flat surface, I do really like them because they're very easy to work with. So I put the back end together here. I haven't soldered it yet, but the 304 on the blocks is against the uh, flat, my flat block that I'm soldering against. And I've just used some of these old centers out of gears uh, to space the blocks slightly away 
from the axle bushes when I solder them in. The other thing you're gonna, that's worth checking is make sure that the axle bushes do go into the holes nicely and are not lifting the chassis up or pushing the chassis down. And I've found that that 304 does work quite nice. There's a little bit of play in the axle bushes because these axle bushes perhaps are a tiny, a slightly smaller diameter than the diameter of the holes. Now that's again one of the reasons why I'm using these and the fact that I'm soldering them in to make sure that they all sit nicely and are held in place. If I was gonna glue them in, I might not be so confident because they're not quite as tight a fit in the hole and you're just relying on that bond between the glue to fill up any gaps and keep the axle bushes in securely. So I'm gonna solder them in. Now you can see there's a slight bit of play in there, but again, once I've soldered, I'm going to just measure and just check that I've got that back axle perfectly perpendicular with the center line of the chassis. So, got a bit of a confession to make. I soldered the Massetti bearings in, and to be honest, I didn't like them very much. They had a lot of sideways movement in them. Basically, the holes were too big for most of the standard axles we use in this type of slot car. So my guess is they're probably made for something like a slotted axle, which is slightly larger diameter, and they're not actually meant for the nominally 332 size axles that we use in most of this type of slot car racing. So I replaced the bearings for another make, but I don't really know which make these are, but the axle is a really nice fit in the bushes. So how do we know if the axle bushes are lined up nicely? Well, your axle should just slide through like that. Basically, gravity is just helping that axle slide through those bushes. So how do we know that it's not because it's just so loose in the bushes? Well, if we have a close look, I can show you that this is a really, really nice fit in those bushes. I'm moving the axle and you can't see, you can hardly see any movement at all in that bushing there at all. And then the other side, again, moving the axle, I'm pushing it sideways like that in the bushing and you can hardly see any movement at all. So it's a really, really nice close fit, but not a tight fit. And the axle just slides through, lovely, through those bushes. If you've got a lot of, a lot of play in your bushes, you probably need to put new bushes in your car. How level and straight is the axle? Well, let's measure it here. So I've just put a, uh, a ruler on the bottom there, a steel rule. And I'm gonna measure it from there. So let's have a look there. And we've got 370, that side. Put it this side here. What do we get? Let me just get that on that ruler there. 370, well, 371, 370, 370.5, that side. So very, very, very close. Now, how does that equate with our axle blocks? Well, this is, 20 thou thick. The axle is 92 thou thick. So let's do the calculations to work out our axle height. Now, it was just easier to put this ruler at the bottom than when I did the total. So with the total I got was 370. So if we take 370 and we take away the axle uh, diameter, which was 92, we also take away the thickness of the ruler, which was 20. Then, if we add on half the thickness of the axle, the 46, what do we get? We get 304. And that was the axle block that I used to set up the axle height. So yes, I'm very happy, they're very accurate, the axle is very level, and I'm pretty happy with that job. So what about the axle and being perpendicular to the center line? Well, let's just check it with the chassis here. So I'm going to take a measurement from the back of the axle to the front corner of the chassis, and I'm gonna do the same both sides and we shall compare them. So here we have it on this side here. Try and get that as straight as possible. Put that across there. And what do we get? We get 
4.139 and a half. And this side, what do we get? 4.139 and a half. Just get that to sit in there properly. And we get 4.139 and a half. So I'm pretty happy with the way I've got this axle lined up with the center of the chassis. And so it's nice and perpendicular. The heights are good and we're ready to go to the next part. Now, if we look really closely at this part of the chassis here, this is where the motor's gonna screw in. Now you're not allowed to remove anything from the chassis, but you can remove a little bit of the bushing away here where it stick over the chassis here so that you can get the screw head past the bushing. So you can just trim a little bit out. You can see the chassis has a natural curve on it anyway. So, but you can't remove any more there, but you can remove a little bit of the bushing. So I've just done that because then it makes it easy to get the screw past the edge of the bushing. It means that you can take the motor in and out more easily. So when I install the motor, I'm going to install it with the red connection, the positive, towards the rear of the chassis. And that means that the writing on the uh, can is facing downwards. Now the reason I'm doing that is because on, in the UK, we run the positive wire on the right hand side of the braid in the direction of travel. So that just means that then I don't have to have the wires crossing over somewhere along the chassis. Just makes a neater job. So you have to screw the motors into these chassis. You can't solder the motor in, that's not allowed. So I've screwed it in place. And a couple of things to note, make sure that when you do screw the motor in place that it sits perfectly flat to the bottom of the chassis. Make sure it doesn't stick up in the air here or stick below the chassis. If it does, it means that this motor bracket here needs the solder joint reflowing, or maybe it's got bent in an accident and therefore it's not holding the motor perfectly in the right place. So again, check that out. If when you screw the motor in tightly, your motor is not completely flush with the bottom of the chassis here, then you need to do something with this motor bracket, okay? Also, when I've screwed it in, I've also put a tiny little bit of super glue or cyanacrylate uh, glue just on the screw head, just here where it touches the chassis, not put it all on the threads, just a little bit on the uh, screw head. You could use some thread lock or things like that. It just stops the screws from vibrating loose. Bearing in mind that these two screws are the only thing that's holding the motor in and this little bracket at the back that this uh, part of the end bell just clips into as you push the motor into the chassis. So what's the gear mesh like now? Well, I'll run it up in a minute, but I just want to check the gear alignment first of all. Now I'd pre-prepared this motor in advance anyway and this pinion here is an ARP 11 tooth pinion. And just to give you some idea of how far out the pinion comes from the uh, motor face. Let's take my calipers here, make sure they're zero. So if I put that pile of caliper on there and I slide it down to the pinion, then we've got 6.1 millimeters or 6.18, which equates to maybe two, four, three thousandths of an inch. So I've got the pinion sticking out that far from the screw face of the motor. And with these bushes in place and this Cohosa uh, gear, they line up really nicely. I've also trimmed the pinion down, if you're wondering why it's uh, not quite as big as they are. I've trimmed it down to the width of the gear because we don't need all that extra weight spinning around on the motor, having to accelerate and break all that extra mass. So again, I've soldered it on, lined it up nicely with that spur gear there so we're not carrying around uh, extra rotating mass. You might also have noticed that I've just skimmed the teeth off, the very tips of the teeth off this angle gear to bring it down to the right height so that it definitely doesn't stick below the chassis. So you can see I've taken it down to 596 or 15.14. So I've done a quick measurement of the motor just to show uh, how reasonable the motor is. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with that value there. 23,000 RPM 
at five volts. But another thing I'm quite happy with the motor is if I connect it up here and you listen, if I connect this up here and we listen carefully, the RPM remains very consistent and doesn't change. It doesn't go up and down, it doesn't wobble. So we'll just listen for a few seconds. There we go. You can see it's very, very consistent. It's not fluctuating, which means that that's nicely run in. Again, if you want to see my video about running one of these motors in, I'll put a link up here. Um, but that's run in nicely and is very, very smooth. So here we have it. I've finished assembling the guide and lead wires and you can see why I put the motor in that way round with the positive at the back because the positive is on the right hand side here. And it just makes the wires a lot nicer and they don't cross over. I've rooted them in this little heart shape here. Um, this little lead wire holder at the front of these chassis lends itself nicely to doing that. And then they also stay nice and flat. If you can look, see they're staying nice and flat as the gear turns. They're not poking up in the air, which will lift the body up at the front as the guide turns. They're also not got any nasty kinks in them, you know, here and here, which could lead to them prematurely breaking off. I've also not melted the guide when I've soldered them on. I've seen plenty of people solder lead wires on and melt the guides. Again, I've got a link up there about soldering lead wires on and how to make a nice little job of it. I've also set up the guide washers in the guide with the braids, etc. So the front clearance is all set up perfectly for the Mega Monster track, which is the one that we're going to be using in the UK. That is our national track. It was the same track as the 2019 Isra Worlds was held on. There we have it. We have a completed Intro 32 BSCRA Genesis chassis ready to go. Maybe ready to win. Thank you for watching this far. Thank you for staying subscribed. Thank you for staying and keeping your support with my channel. I will be back with a lot more videos to come on all sorts of slot racing. I've got some hard body videos coming. I've got some more BSCRA style videos coming. I've got things on body shells. I've got things on tools and equipment and measuring things. I've got loads of things in the pipeline to come on with new videos. So once again, thank you for watching. If this is your first video, please subscribe. Please also like my video. Anybody watching, please put your thumbs up and then it will get my videos back out there to the wider slot car audience. Thank you very much. See you again next time.